Good morning. <laughs> so what are you doing this year? Um, Sleeping Beauty this year. Um, and I shall be playing Tweedy, as I normally do in the pantomime. Um, and I'm an inventor in Sleeping Beauty, so I'm going to come up with a few inventions. For example? Um, I'm trying to think on one that's not going to give... Because one of them is integral to the plot, you see. So I don't, I don't want to give that one away. Um, I don't know if I can give any of them away, <laughs> actually. It might be too Have you got a new special? Too last year you did the back rope. Have you got something new like that this year? Um, yes, I should be, um, I should be on a trapeze this year. Throwing knives? No, on a trapeze this year. <laughs> now, the, the knives that I did too recently, I think. A lot of people will have seen the knives But what would you be summer. doing on the trapeze? Would you be flying or just swinging backwards and forwards? Well, you'll have to wait and see, won't you? <laughs> Come on, give me something. <laughs> um, I, I, well, to be honest, I don't really know what all I'm going to be doing on it yet because we can't actually rig it and I can't see how much room I've got with it. I haven't. Um, you do it over the auditorium, hang it from the cross arch and go backwards and forwards like that? No, they won't let me do that. Um, unlike the circus, they're very health and safety conscious. Not that the circus isn't health and safety conscious, but they're more so in the theatre. So there's, it depends on where we can hang it and what sort of um, other things are in the way as to what I do. But a lot of it will be actually trying to get on the trapeze. Mm -hmm. You're putting a ladder up against it and climb up. Yeah, things like that, yes. Yeah, you know how much I like ladders. You do? Yes. I mean, where would you be without them? I know. Well, it's, a, it's just that everyone has been up a ladder at some They're a bit stage. like deck chairs, aren't they? There's so many ways you can get tangled in them. Yes, yeah, and, um, and it's also got the extra um, sort of added danger of the height that you don't have with the deck chair. The, so I like having that element of danger. It's that sort of um, Buster Keaton influence of having this sort of this little bit of a, a scare factor before the What's the name of your old character in this, Joe? Apart from, I know you're Tweedy, but... No, it's just Tweedy again. But, and, and who is the character? I mean, in relation to Sleeping Beauty and things? Um, he's... Sleeping Beauty has been raised by Nanny Nice Hands, played by Willie Elliot, and um, so have I. So, oh. um, we're kind of... We're not... I suppose we're half brother and half sister. I think they say that at some point in the script. Um, I kept automatically calling Willie Mum because he's been my mum in the last two pantomimes. And then we suddenly thought, well, he's not really my mum. But then he did raise me, so I got away with it, so it's all right. Because yeah. you work well with Willie, don't you? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's great. It's great, we work really well together. So it's always when, when you first do a, a show and you're kind of, you're partnered up with someone you haven't met before, you've no idea if the chemistry is going to work or not. You know, it's always kind of a bit of a risk. Um, so it was, it was perfect, you know, it, it worked the first year and it built, built up last year because you know, we knew each other a bit better and, you know, the timings have got better, so this year it should be even better. Because mm. you always manage to find something completely different to do, don't you? Yeah. That's, that's important, isn't it? And they come to see Tweedy, but not always doing the same thing. Yeah, I, I always like to come up with new things. Um, and yeah, I think it's good for the audience because it's something new for them, but it, it's just... I like doing new things all the time. I like setting myself new challenges and kind of coming up with new bits of business. Um, I should be doing a bit of magic as well. Um, I've done magic show a couple of times now at as part of the comedy festival here in Cheltenham. The magic's not usually gone that well, but fortunately, people will find it funny. So, do any of your new ideas fail? Did you ever spend weeks on something and then it just doesn't work? Um, y yes, but usually, fortunately, I come to that conclusion before I try it out in front of the audience. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, just recently for the, the Gifford show, I did um, The God of Wind, which worked very well. And then I was going to do another one which was similar coming out being um, The God of Sea. So I was going to come out with the same, exactly the same bucket as The God of Wind had. Because um, for those of you who don't know, I did it. A thing with a bucket that had wind in it and blew things everywhere. So I was going to have one that squirted water everywhere, and I'd worked out this routine and thought it was quite good. But when it came to it, it yeah, it, it just didn't really work. I think because the wind one was so good, 
So I spent a lot of time kind of um, working out how to build this prop that I could operate, you know, with my feet that would squirt water out and things like that. And um, now it's sat in the shed doing nothing. Do you, do you have a workshop or is all this done on the kitchen table? Um, well, I've recently moved house, so I do have a sort of outhouse that I can build stuff in. A lot of stuff isn't small, is it? It's not tabletop. No, no. I, I can't resist a good prop. I, I always kind of say, right, I'll, I'll, I won't use so many props this year, and then I'll just see something and think, oh, that's really good, or I'll have an idea and think, oh, no, this would be great. But do you scour it. eBay and try and find old ones, or do you build them all yourself? Um, it, it's a bit of both. You know, if, if I see something on eBay that just kind of stands out and I have an idea when I see it, I'll buy it. But, yeah, a lot of the time, I love hardware shops. You know, I spend a lot of time looking at bits there and making things. I mean, do you, are you handy? Can you do things like welding? And not, not really. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, uh, most of the props I build aren't actually that good, but fortunately I disguise them well. <laughs> they, they look all right. Yeah. But a lot of the time, even if the prop looks a bit rubbish, it kind of fits in, <laughs> fits in with my character, you know, because you wouldn't expect um, Tweedy the Clown to be great at building things. I don't know, I would. Would you? <laughs> but the actual clown. Because the, the things that I invent and build in, in Sleeping Beauty, they have that sort of cack, home-built look to them. But that's quite nice, actually, sometimes. I think so. And I, it's quite nice to have a prop that's made out of things that people and kids can kind of spot. It's the sort of the, the old Blue Peter school of prop making. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Very liquid bottles and things. Yeah, yeah, I like that sort of that look. But it's good because people, the kids can associate with it. They can think, oh, I could go home and make one of those. Yeah, yeah, that's a, it's a nice aspect. What's the most complicated thing you ever made? Um, I don't... The strongman act that I did um, the year before on Gifford, originally it was really complicated, um, but then I just couldn't get it to be consistent enough because I come out and I do a mime act with some weight, being a strong man, and then I get a big, muscly looking sort of guy out of the audience and he wouldn't be able to lift it. And initially I um, had a series of electromagnets that held it in place and a switch I flipped with my foot, but I had so many problems with it because um, you had to, when I put it back down, it had to line up. Um, so I ended up scrapping that and making it simpler with sort of eyelets and bolts, but it took me a long time to, <laughs> to figure well, out. What, what's the difference it. between Giffords and, and the pantomime? Do you find it's, it's, it's different or is it feel much the same? Um, I mean, you have more well, of a script oh, and there's more of a story. Like yeah, I'm, I'm involved in, in the narrative, and I'm involved in the narrative quite a bit this year. Um, and obviously, with, with the pantomime, you know, I, I'm on the stage, so it's, you're not as, um, I don't think you're quite as involved, you know, I'm not so much, I do go in among the audience in the pantomime, but it's not quite as, um, you know, it's, it's just a bit, bit more distant mm. than the circus and obviously you don't have that kind of working in the round to deal with. you find that more difficult or um, is it not a problem? No, it's, it's, it's just different. Yeah. Um, yeah. And how different from doing the, the straight play, the Doc Reeve? Well that was very different, yes. Were you, you, were, you were aware of the differentness there because you were very controlled with that. Yeah. Um, I was quite proud of myself being so controlled. The the thing I found, like I've, I said before, is about I had to build up the um, the fourth wall, mm -hmm. you know, because I'm used to kind of having but that interaction. But I I quite like that sort of being so absorbed in this kind of other world, and not you know not having that. It, it was um, yeah, it was interesting. I quite liked it.